Hello Year 8 and welcome to Program Your Platform Game Lesson 1. Today we're going to be looking at basic movement. That means we're going to get our character to move left and to move right across our screen on a platform. The prerequisite for today's lesson is can you make sure that you have got your block sprite completed as you can see on screen and your main character who will be using to program left and right across the screen. Before you begin, I suggest you read through the tutorial and you do it one part at a time and it helps if you just tick it off as you go along. So the first thing we're going to do is create the sprites in Game Maker. And this takes us to the Game Maker interface as you see on screen. The first thing I'm going to do is to turn, go on File and turn on Advanced Mode so I can access some of the features needed in today's tutorial. And the second thing I'm going to do is save my work. File save as and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to save this on my OneDrive. Now the reason I'm using my OneDrive is that this will be my OneDrive is available in both school and while I'm at home. So I'm going to save this my year eight and we'll call it lesson one and hit save. So save it, give it a sensible name and we pick it, can begin. So the first thing in tutorial it mentions creating the sprites. The red pack is our sprite icon. I create that and it's going to ask me to give my sprite a name. Note in your tutorial, probably to tell you it's called S or SPR, something sensible. I'm going to call this sprite character and I'm going to load the sprite because I have it saved on disk. And my sprites were saved in my OneDrive. So you'll navigate to the browser and I'm importing my character. Now note in your uh, tutorial it tells you to go into modify the mask and to make sure that the binding box is on the full image and we can click OK and it says check the precise image, precise collision detection and we hit OK. And I can see I've imported my graphic. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat that for my wall sprite. I'm going to call this SPR and the reason we give them prefix names like S or SPR is that throughout the course of our game we will have lots of sprites and objects and rooms and scripts and it's good just to know at a glance to say yeah well that must be a sprite because it's been prefixed with an S or a sprite. And again I'm going to load only this time it's my block and again I'm going to turn on the bounding box to the full image and there we go, we've created our first two sprites. Next, in order to program our sprites, we've got to turn them into objects. And the blue ball is our icon for creating objects. I'm going to create an object, and this time I'm going to call it O or OBJ. So this is going to be my object for my character. And it asks, what sprite do I want to use? And I'm going to pick up the sprite for my character. And at the moment, I'm just going to click OK. In fact, I'm going to refer to the tutorial and it will probably tell us to make sure that the character object is solid. Set those, that's our wall. And I'm back and I'm going to Keep this as visible. I'll not leave it solid at the moment. I can go in and change these at any time. So you now see that I've got a sprite character. That's just the graphic, but it's the object that I'm going to program and we can access the properties by double clicking on it. So later we'll come back to programming this. Next, I'm going to create an object for my wall. Call this something like obj underscore wall. And this is my wall. And I'm going to make sure that this is solid. We do not need to program our wall. It's just going to be static. So let's get to the programming. And in your tutorial, if you refer down to adding movement, number four, add movement to the character. We're going to use something in computer science that we call a variable. And a variable is just a value that can change just like in maths. 3x equals 12, well x equals 4, but 2x equals 12, x equals 6. So we want our speed to be variable because in a platform game you might want your character to pick up a bonus and run faster or maybe hit something and be dazed and run slower. So our speed is going to be a variable. 
and that's the first thing that I'm going to create on my character. So I'm opening up my character objects and it's asking me, I'm going to uh, add an event and I'm going to create. And what I'm going to create is a variable. So in the control, it'll say we want a variable and I drag that into the actions and it's asking me to give it a name. I'm going to call this move speed, move underscore speed. And I'm going to set it an initial value. And my character is going to run at a speed, and move at a speed of five. I'm not going to select relative. We don't want it to be a relative number to go five, 10, 15, 20, and I have to get relatively faster. Always going to run at five unless something changes the variable. And I click OK. So just to explain that, what this means is when the object character is created, they're going to receive a variable called move speed. Next, we want to be able to use this to control the movement of the character. And if you refer to your tutorial, we're now down to adding the movement. And we're going to get the character to look to their left and to look to their right. And if there's nothing there, we're going to allow them to run. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to add an event. I'm going to choose add an event and I'm going to be controlling this with my keyboard. So the keyboard, I'm going to start with left. And when someone clicks the left button, I want them to check if the position is collision free. So in the X axis, I want them to look to their left. And the X axis, just like in maths, you've got your X is left and right and your Y axis is up and down. This divides the screen. And I want my character to check five pixels to their left. And I've stored that number five in a variable called move speed. So I'm going to say that check if minus move speed. Now make sure you spell the variable name correctly, just like you named it or else this will not work. So I'm basically saying, look five elements, five pixels to your left. And I'm going to change this relative because I always want them, when someone hits the keyboard, no matter where the character is, I want them to look to their left at five pixels. And I click OK. So I'm saying, if that if position is collision free, I'm then going to say, look, I want you to jump into it. And we're going to go to jump into position. So if it's free, where do I want you to jump to? Well, again, minus move speed. It will jump into, or effectively move to the left five pixels. And again, I will want that relative, always moving along to its left. And I'm going to click OK. I am now going to select these with my mouse. Sorry. I'm going to control click these. Rather than, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to copy these. Because I'm going to be doing the same for the right event on the keyboard only instead of moving negative i'm going to jump right positive so i'm going to add an event keyboard i'm going to say right and i'm going to paste and what i'm going to change is get rid of the negative they're going to look five along the x that will be to the right and it's relative and they're going to jump into the position zero so it's now time to test the game so I, on my character to review, when they're created, they're given a variable. If someone hits left, they're going to check that variable, that number to their left. And if there's no obstacles there, they will jump into it. If someone hits right, they're going to check five pixels to the right, because that's what we set the value of the variable, and they're going to jump into it. And it's now time to create a room or a level and put in our objects. So up back up to the toolbar, here's my icon to create a room. I'm going to call my room. I'm going to rename it just in the settings. I'm going to, instead of room zero, I'm going to call it level one. Uh, I'll give it a little caption, level one. I'll keep the size to 640 by 480. Note again, binary values, powers of two, so our images will fit in perfectly and we can snap them in into the room. So let's begin with, I'm going to click on the objects tab and I'm going to add the object wall it's already selected and if you read the instructions here you can hold down the left you can put them in manually or you can hold down the the shift button 
and I can put in lots. So at this stage, I'm going to create a very simple platform. And I'm going to now place in my character into the middle. And I'm going to test my game by hitting the green button. And if we've programmed this correctly, I'll hit left on the keyboard and my strawberry, angry strawberry will move to the left, right to the right. Fingers crossed. And hopefully sometime this will execute. Here we go. See if you can get this working. And there we go, the game has loaded and you can see Angry Strawberry, I hit left on the keyboard, goes left. But look, he can't go past the wall because he's looked left and then five pixels to the left, there's something there so he can't jump into the position. And the same I can test it in the right. So you should be able to test your game and see your character moves left and right. So, Having completed that, you are now ready for your next lesson, which will be jumping. And again, to troubleshoot, if you have any problems, go to the tutorial, rewatch the video. You can post questions to your team or even to your Flipgrid, and myself or your classmates will, will help. Good luck with lesson one.